Okay, everybody. We're going to get started uh, right about now. Um, for those of you who were excited to, uh, to, to have Eric Fogg instead of me, uh, I, I hate to sorely disappoint you, uh, but, but Eric uh, was pulled away from today's webinar due to some urgent personal items. Uh, but uh, fear not, uh, you still have two uh, executive members of the Machine Metrics team here today filling in. Um, uh, and I'll introduce our, ourselves shortly. Uh, but I do welcome all of you to today's webinar, uh, Unlocking uh, Accurate Production Data with Machine Connectivity. Uh, my name is Graham Merriman. I'll be your host. Um, but just to kind of set the stage uh, for today's webinar, um, you know, today is really a, a once-in-generation opportunity for manufacturers to capitalize on this reorganization of global supply chain that we're all reading so much about. And in order to do so, uh, manufacturing is really undergoing a significant transformation from these manual lean systems to connected systems, right? That rely less on, on human interaction and manual data entry. Yet, uh, most of us and in most factories, uh, we still find disconnected operations. Machines are disconnected from people who operate them and the systems that manage, you know, your day-to-day -day operations. You know, simply put, just the tools that we were once using, the tools of yesterday, aren't really cutting it anymore. And a recent survey that we actually, uh, we host on one of our webinars suggested that uh, over 80% of companies either disliked or even hated the software and connectivity systems that they use today. Um, the truth is that we just cannot solve the problems of tomorrow with the, the tools of the past. And continuous improvement in manufacturing really begins with capturing insights from the heart of your manufacturing operations, which are specifically the machine assets that are making things. Um, you know, these machines, as you're all well aware, because you all pay for them, um, are, are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, produce data, you know, every millisecond. Um, yet this data is not really being captured or analyzed to improve efficiency, despite all the innovations and in robotics and automation, all the buzzwords that you hear from marketers like me. Um, Yet the, the inefficiencies really that exist at the machine level are the lowest hanging fruit uh, and the catalyst to driving many future automations. Uh, but getting that data until recently has been really freaking hard. So today's webinar, we're really gonna talk about, you know, um, why machine connectivity uh, is so critical um, to, to driving manufacturing uh, operations uh, optimization, uh, how it can be done, how machine metrics approaches it, some of the common challenges associated, and more. But we are really grateful to have you here. Uh, for those of you who have you know, already joined, or, you know, this is me, or this is a headshot of me. Um, I'm Graham Emmerman. I'm your, your host and moderator. I'm also the VP of Marketing for Machine Metrics. Back from uh, an extended non-webinar hosting uh, stint here. But it is nice to be back with you all, um, and 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 you know I'm excited to chat about this today. Um, just uh, before we get started, um, and for those of you who who may already have concerns, if you're not, uh, this webinar is being recorded, and you know we will send you a link. Um, so for those of you who asked me about that, inevitably, you will get one. That doesn't mean you should leave now. Um, questions are of course welcome. Um, it's in the right hand side of the navigation. Um, you can also, we're also going to have a Q and A at the end, uh, Jacob, uh, who I am fortunate to have here today, um, way smarter than me, uh, our, our CTO and co-founder, um, uh, he'll be my co-presenter talking about some of the technical details to machine connectivity. Um, and, and we're really grateful to have him. He's going to help us run our Q and A at the end of the session here. Um, but, um, you know, um, uh, our agenda for those of you who, who wanted to know, uh, we're just going to do a little introduction, uh, talk a bit about you know machine metrics quickly. I assure you, um, and you know uh, talk about some of the current challenges with machine connectivity, um, the components involved, how to actually get this data, um, how to select the right solution for your organization, and then uh, we're going to get into a Q and A where we can answer all those pressing questions that I'm sure you're just holding in right now. Um, so before we get started, um, you know, for those of you who are here and don't know us, uh, you know, we are Machine Metrics. Um, Machine Metrics is the leading connectivity platform for manufacturing. So we made it incredibly easy to connect to manufacturing equipment of all different types, makes models and controls, capture real-time data, and automates insights 
for frontline workers and other factory systems to quickly identify and help companies address areas of operational improvement for, for your shop floors. And today, you know, we do have hundreds of manufacturers around the globe that have connected thousands of machines to machine metrics to monitor their productivity, identify production bottlenecks, uh, predict machine failures, and automate workflows uh, around the operations of manufacturing uh, equipment. Uh, as you can see on the bottom, uh, and we're going to get into this in more detail later, uh, you know, machine metrics uh, has a unique ability to capture data, not just from modern machines, but legacy machines too. And, the, uh, and a superpower of normalizing that data into a standard format. Uh, those technical people here call that a unified namespace, uh, which makes that data then immediately uh, analyzable and actionable. Um, all that data resides in, in our cloud-based platform. Uh, so you can have remote access to it from anywhere at any time. Uh, and, and to make that data instantly usable, um, we provide a number of out-of-the-box use cases that include uh, utilization monitoring, as you can see here on the left, uh, production monitoring, uh, condition monitoring, and tool monitoring solutions. Um, many of our customers uh, will extend uh, our data directly from the machine metrics platform into their other factory systems uh, to drive countless automation, such as ERP or MES, to reduce the need for manual data entry uh, that exists on the shop floor that you know slows your team down. Um, other analytic solutions like uh, Tableau, BI, uh, or, or Clipfolio, um, so, so you can extend uh, your analytics uh, across you know, multiple different solutions. Um, you know, machine metrics can be a, a trigger point for maintenance platforms. And you know, we've added box integrations with solutions like MaintainX, Upkeep, and, Ma and, and MaintainX um, that allow you to, um, to uh, trigger uh, uh, diagnostic data-driven and condition-driven events uh, for your maintenance team uh, to reduce the need for PM calendars. Um, that's the way the maintenance should be done, right? Is when the, when the machine tells you when it needs to be done, right? Uh, as well as in the uh, work instructions and quality solutions, uh, the opportunities for, uh, for machine data-driven integrations are endless. Um, and we're just in the early stages of showing what's possible. Um, and I promise you that that's the end of my machine metric spiel, at least for this moment here. Um, so um, you're all here today and we're all talking about connectivity. The real question is connect, what is connectivity? Um, you know. Uh, I think that there's a, uh, you know, just speaking off the cuff here, there's a bit of a, de a difference between machine data collection and connectivity. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, machine data collection is really, uh, you know, one direction, you know, collecting something from somewhere. Uh, whereas connection, it, it can be bi-directional, right? So it's not enough just to collect data, but it, it's, it's even more important to collect that data and then make it, uh, push it somewhere else, right? Whether it be you know, into a, a platform, uh, a database, um, into another factory system, um, insights that can go back to the machine. So, you know, connectivity essentially uh, is, is driven by three core components, right? The ability to consume data, the ability to standardize that data uh, into a structure that makes it even understandable. Um, what does this data even mean in the first place? And then of course, the ability to connect it somewhere Right, whether it be you know to a system, uh, you know to machine metrics, right, um, you know insights that can be driven back to the machine. Um, that's that's how we define the difference between collection and, and connection. Um, now, easier said than done. Uh, for those of you who are on this webinar, uh, you don't have to raise your hand, uh, but you know you've probably had an experience where um, you know getting this data from you know machines is is really freaking hard. Uh, and the question is, why is it so difficult? Uh, well, discrete manufacturing uh, introduces significant complexity when it comes to machine connectivity. And it really all starts with the variability of the machines in discrete manufacturing plants. There are many different machine manufacturers and no one plant only has one brand. If you do only have one plant, feel free to shout out uh, one type of machine, feel free to shout out in the chat and good for you. Um, you know, you found something that you love. Uh, but most people, um, you know, have a number of different types of machines. Uh, they are, there are different ranges. They range from, you know, uh, old to new with modern control systems, older control systems to 20, 30 year, year old machines with limited control capabilities. Uh, we've had customers that have come to us with machines as old as World War II. 
Um, so, you know, connecting to and collecting data from all these various plant assets is a significant challenge, considering many of these machines were never even designed to provide data for the kind of holistic, you know, factory or enterprise wide analytics solutions that companies are focused on enabling today, right? So um, the, 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 the initial challenge here that we're dealing with is just data variety, right? Um, whether it's a modern machine that speaks, you know, uh, MT Connect, FANUC, uh, OPC UA, uh, you know, co communicates through Ethernet IP, Mobbus TCP for any of the other people that understand uh, what I'm talking about on this attendees list, I appreciate you. Uh, for those that you don't, all you need to really understand is that these machines essentially speak hundreds of different languages. And even those that are standardized uh, into one language, um, it varies from one machine to another. So not only are there many distinct types of equipment, you know, from lathes to mills to plastic injection molding, to stamping, to laser cutting, to robotics, uh, but depending on the mechanisms available for acquiring the data from those systems, the data points could be actually quite diverse. So to provide effective tools for analyzing this data across these different distinct, distinct systems, uh, the data has to be transformed into a common model so it can actually be connected and used uh, you know, and ingested by another system so it makes sense. Imagine trying to translate essentially all of not just the human languages of the world, but all the animal languages as well. And that's sort of the challenge that you face uh, when you're dealing with machine connectivity. Not only does each control have its own mechanism for capturing data, uh, but the data points can differ literally by the family to make the model uh, of the machine using that control, as well as the version of the software running on that control. It really is um, you know, that different. Uh, fortunately, that's our problem, not yours, uh, if you use machine metrics, uh, but it, it, it's a huge challenge um, when it comes to just making it easy to, to get this data. Um, the second challenge that we've seen is just the data volume. So manufacturing equipment and discrete manufacturing equipment in particular is, as you're aware, very complex. A machine is a large system of components that work in coordination uh, that result in the hundreds of distinct data points that change constantly. So depending on what you want to do with that data, there may be situations where it's required to capture data at different speeds. Um, you know, is it one hertz? Do you need 1000 hertz? Um, many times, if you just want to visualize is my machine running or not, you know, it might be good enough just to have a pulse check, right? Uh, to understand, oh, every you know, every second, you know, what my machine is running. Every, you know, you can capture that data and push it to the cloud using a basic, you know, Hertz uh, uh, rate of data capture. Uh, if you want to be able to visualize micro fractures mm -hmm. that lead to, uh, you know, potentially lead to a scrap part through a, a bad cut, uh, those micro fractures are often only visible through, you know, upwards of a thousand kil uh, uh, Hertz. Right or a, a, a kilohertz of data capture from these machines. So um, when you're looking for uh, machine connectivity, um, you have to consider um, understanding what actual speed the data has to be captured at in order to support the use cases that you're looking to do. Uh, many machines don't support all these different uh, speeds. Uh, and so being able to, 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 to solve that problem is, is another challenge that manufacturers face when you're looking to enable use cases. Um, and lastly, uh, and you know, um, to speak a little bit more about that, while some systems can provide value with, let's say, low fidelity and even high latency data, certain use cases do require uh, data to be more real time to be effective. Um, so the data speed uh, itself um, is critical. And, and just to speak to the, whereas with volume, right, the system that you uh, are using must be capable of of not just hosting, but storing all the data um, that you're capturing in real time, capable of performing complex processing uh, where it's most appropriate at both the edge or the cloud, because uh, there's so much data that you're collecting. The speed that the data is being collected is, is, is equally important and equally challenging, right? So edge technology is oftentimes required for certain machine connectivity to process these high volumes of data, uh, whether it be at the millisecond or less, uh, to drive action for potentially prevent damages to the machine or in the workplace. So um, between the data variety, data volume, or the data speed, 
uh, manufacturers have a lot of challenges uh, when it comes to capturing data uh, from these machines. Uh, fortunately, um, there are solutions uh, and, and opportunities to make this easier. Um, and that's why we have uh, Jacob Lozier here, um, who is our, our, our CTO and co-founder. And he's gonna talk to you a bit about you know, uh, the ways uh, of which connecting uh, to certain machines is possible um, uh, and, and also contextualize that within our approach to doing so. So allow me to sort of like mute myself here. And Jacob, I'm happy to advance the slides for you if you just wanna say sure. next slide. You got it, I can do that. Thanks for having me, everyone. Great to speak to you all. Uh, let's jump right in, next slide. All right, so the first thing that you need to do when connecting any sort of IoT solution to your manufacturing equipment is actually connect it on the network. Uh, one important aspect to keep in mind with most manufacturing equipment is the legacy of the software systems that are on it. Most manufacturing equipment runs operating systems and software that is very old and hasn't been kept up, kept up to date because typically that those systems are air gaps from any access to the internet. So uh, when you're considering connecting your manufacturing equipment, keep this in mind. Uh, one great approach to that is to adopt uh, edge technology, which is able to segregate access to an internet connection from network that has access to the manufacturing equipment. As you can see in this picture here, uh, the machine metrics edge device is one example of that, where we recommend that our customers keep their machines on a uh, segregated internetless network, and our edge device communicates directly with that equipment or through a firewall. And separately, our edge device is on a separate network interface card connected to a network with access to the internet. At that point, our edge device always reaches out there's no reason for you to have a system where the cloud needs to reach in to your facility. That requires you to open additional ports on your firewall for inbound, and that's really just not the right approach to go. So our edge device knows how to reach out both to the manufacturing equipment, capture data, translate that information into a common format, and then push that data to the cloud over that second network interface connection. Next slide. So um, when you're actually connecting the manufacturing equipment, Graham spoke to the variety of lineages and brands makes models of controls uh, that you really have to deal with. Uh, every make model and family uh, probably uses a different type of control. Granted, there are some major players there like Fennec, Haas, Heidenhain, and some others listed here. And, and those are going to have a sort of repeatability to them, but just going to go and support that set of five, the, the major five, uh, is, is a pretty big undertaking because each one speaks a distinct language. And then within each one of those controls, that control is used on a wide variety of different machine types, makes, models, families, as I mentioned, and purposes. And so the data that you get off of those machines, while you might be able to speak the same language when talking to any FANUC machine, they might actually speak in a different dialect. So they might actually use a different set of properties to indicate that the machine is running or not, or that it's doing produ um, productive work or not, or it's produced a part or not. So further distilling down the FANUC model, for example, down to it's a Sugami versus um, a Makino, and I don't mean to isolate out FANUC here, each one of these controls falls into the same sort of challenge. You need to further take that information that you get and translate it down into what the meaningful information you're actually getting off that control in a way to make it common across all of the equipment that you're capturing data from. And so those are the CNC controls. But below that, there's also industry-wide protocols that, that you should expect your system to adopt and support uh, because many machines that don't fall into these categories do support some of these others. And, and you really wanna be able to hit the big the big few, OPC UA, Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP. Um, and then you start to see the, the coming up of MQTT and, and MT Connect in a number of areas. Uh, and then we obviously have some of these more PLCs for more custom machining or other systems where you're starting to integrate. Uh, and for example, Alan Bradley uses Ethernet IP. Um, so depending on the mix and make of the systems that you use, you'll have to put together a pretty comprehensive set of tools to do that or leverage a system or ecosystem that provides that for you. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, you obviously have a number of different systems in, uh, within your facility, and it's really important too that you're able to mix and match 
some of the solutions that some of the different uh, connectivity mechanisms that that you need to use. For example, while your system, while the software solution you're using might be able to connect to the Heidenheim control, you might want to also measure the ambient temperature around the equipment to see if you can understand some more uh, environmental impacts on your operations. So you need to be able to mix and match both sensors. It sometimes, depending on your use case, is valuable to mix and match both control data and sensor data into your solution. Um, and depending on the age of the equipment, it might not fall into any one of those categories, and you have to go all with sensors, in which case you really have to look at the operation of the equipment, what sort of um, physical um, repetitive um, actions it takes to understand what the machine's behavior is when it's running versus when it's not, and when it's uh, producing parts or any other important metrics that you, you really want to uh, understand about your operation. So control data, when you're capturing data directly from the control, uh, can offer a really powerful insight. Uh, the control itself, the machine itself, has dozens, if not hundreds, or thousands of sensors in some cases. And so for us to be able to talk directly to the control to understand how it's thinking about those, that sensor data removes a lot of that manual headache of having to understand how the different sensors are configured and what information they're trying to capture and how that um, information is being then used to perform different corrective actions within the equipment. So we can talk directly to the control over an Ethernet cable, requires less configuration, less um, manual setup if you have that connector, that thing that knows how to talk in that specific uh, machine language protocol and knows how to translate its dialect into that common format. If you have that, uh, you can have a much quicker and more reliable connection to a machine that produces more uh, beneficial results with the data. However, that's not always the case. And so being able to add sensors to the mix either to enhance the data that you get from the control or completely supplement the data that you get from the control and, and provide all the data you're going to get from an older piece of equipment uh, is really powerful. Jacob, uh, now um, I'm just an interested uh, attendee here. You know, um, would you say that like, you know, would you give us a good use case or like maybe even an example of where, you know, uh, the data from a control might be more powerful than say like a data from a sensor? Sure, sure. So one example uh, is, uh, certain machine vendors, certain control vendors provide access to very high fidelity data from sensors on the control. Now these sensors are placed directly, they're placed directly in the right spot. So there's no additional configuration required for you to get a consistent sensor reading from kilohertz level data to potentially predict tool failure. So you can create solutions that are easily deployable in a consistent way across equipment without invasive uh, sensor installations. Um, another example of control data that you can't get from sensors uh, is some more of that operational layer data, like what alarm occurred on the machine. So if the machine uh, went into a certain failure state, the sensors that you add externally to the machine might not be sufficient for you to decide uh, what the machine's failure state is. And so having information right off of uh, right off of the control to tell you that it was a bar feeder alarm might be able to uh, be used in a Pareto for creating certain um, corrective actions and improvement plans. Another example of data that you can't easily get, uh, maybe even at all, get from sensors is information about the program that is running on the machine. That's very powerful. The name of the program, the program headers sometimes include the part number which, be, which is being machined, which can, use, which can be used to um, create it, it humanizes the data. It allows for you to compartmentalize and create reports on how the machine's operation and behavior uh, differs based on the part that's being made and allows you to create production monitoring uh, use cases around that. You can know and how- my, And uh, what I'm hearing is that, you know, being able to capture the data directly from the control provides more context that perhaps would allow for less human uh, data entry. Um, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So if we can get that context from the operator, from the factory floor worker, what mach the, sh the machine is intending to do, we can provide reports, we can integrate into ERPs um, without having the operator have to touch any external systems. Have that machine's operation drive the rest of the information throughout the factory. 
So how do these, you know, I'm hearing connectivity, I'm hearing that, you know, these edge devices, you know, are critical uh, to run. How does, uh, how do we take on something like that here? Sure. So it's really important that uh, your, the system that you adopt is uh, going to support a wide variety of controls natively. Uh, it has to close the gap with any of the controls that it can't support natively with flexible sensor systems. Um, you should expect the system to be configured and managed centrally whether it's remotely in a cloud system or centrally to you. Uh, if any one of these devices fail, it's really important that you can easily recover it without having to go to each one of these devices and set it up all over again fresh. Uh, having that source of truth on the device is not the right place for it. It's important that that's centrally managed. Now, uh, how Machine Metrics takes this on is we have a cloud-based system that allows for users to easily connect an edge device and authorize it to send data to our cloud on that customer's behalf. It connects to the manufacturing equipment over a network cable or to a sensor-based system also over a network cable. Uh, and then data is configured within our interface. We, next slide. Uh, the user then specifies the type of control um, or the protocol that we're communicating over, tells us the IP address that we're connecting to, and everything else is automated. We're able to capture data directly from, uh, we're able to install our software automatically on the edge device capture data from the control or sensors and stream that to our cloud. Uh, depending on how consistent the and, and how common the type of equipment is, the rest of it is completely automated. FANUC-based controls, Haas, Heidenheim, Siemens, uh, they all automatically map their data points. Um, but in certain circumstances where you're communicating with an OPC UA device, for example, where that particular machine builder created their own tag structure, we provide tools for you to go and map uh, which tags mean what in the context of the overall uh, namespace. There we go. So here's your, here's your breakdown. Uh, we provide tools, like I said, to take those tags and further map them down to uh, that, that common nomenclature. And uh, we have a variety of controls we automatically map for uh, in protocols, and then others do require some manual input. But even in the case of OPC UA uh, and some others, as those types of machines get integrated into our system, adding one more, the system learns and it becomes easier and easier. Here's an example of uh, some of the types of data that you can get off of, I believe this is, what type of control is this? Um, it, looks this like a, it looks like a FANUC control. Yeah, so you can see the richness in the data. If we're capturing data directly from sensors, we're getting voltage levels that have to be translated, which is fine, into temperatures to add that context, for example, or uh, translated into whether the machine is running or not. But here you can actually see text-based data. What tool number is the machine using right now? You can't really get that from a sensor. What's the name of the program? So there's a lot of rich, contextually aware data uh, that you can use to create rules. Alarms, what alarms are present? Maybe I wanna create a maintenance event uh, whenever a particular alarm code fires. That's really hard to capture with sensors. Uh, if, if not impossible in some cases. So getting data directly from the control is incredibly powerful. Here's a great now, use case. Go, yeah, go let, let, I was gonna say, so let's talk about, uh, obviously we're capturing data, you know, um, you know even for, for, for many pieces of data that you capture from these machines, providing additional context is obviously quite critical, uh, but also it's likely that you may want to uh, adapt or, you know, even transform that data even further from the state that it kind of comes off the machine. For those of us who looked at machine data before, it sometimes doesn't necessarily look the way that you want it to, or necessarily, you know, and, and machine metrics, you know, can only do so much to that. Uh, but we, it sounds like there's opportunities here to even uh, transform it even further, Jacob. Is that the case? Yeah, and I'll give you two examples of that. One is a robotically controlled CNC machine. Maybe we're just connecting to the CNC machine itself and not the whole cell. And the machine is saying, I'm paused. But in reality, the system itself is still active because the robot is performing an additional operation. This is a great use case for you to actually combine information from the robot either directly uh, with our universal robots connector or uh, using sensors around other motors and such to understand that the robot is performing its operation and combine that with the active state of the machine or idle state of the machine in this case to know that as a cell, it is still doing its useful work. Another example, uh, most machines don't alarm out or even fire a warning when the operator dials down the feed rate during a setup or 
more consequentially during a production run uh, to take a break or, or for whatever reason, maybe they just forgot that they dialed it down during a setup. And so by being able to further augment the data that comes off the machine and, and really say to our system that feed rate, as that example, going below 100 during a production run is an alarm state that we should be notified about, allows for you to create an even richer experience that drives a lot of really important action within your facility. Excellent. So Jacob, uh, I've done my best to summarize all your brilliant points and statements here in just you know two, two slides um, you know, for my lay brain here. Uh, but what I hear is there's really two pieces of the puzzle that, that seem to matter the most when it comes to device connectivity. The, the first one is out of the box support for a wide variety of industrial systems, devices, protocols, and controls. So the questions I think that anybody, when they're looking for a connectivity solutions should probably be asking themselves are things like, A, is this system capable of connecting not just to some things, but to all of my factory assets? Uh, B, does the data collection require additional data transformation? You know, does, is, or does the system instantly allow for consumable, usable, normalized data? Um, Third, and you know, I think this this goes, um, you know, perhaps maybe most importantly here, and we don't talk about this enough, but how quickly and easily can this system be installed? Um, you know, for for anyone here who's tried to do this through, you know, more manual solutions, capture data and and connect it to a to a system, uh, it can take months, if not years, and and even still at the end of that process. Um, the data might not be in the format that it uh, that enables, you know, even just a basic dashboard, right? So, um, you know, machine metrics, for example, uh, last year, 80% of our customers were able to self-install the platform without us ever coming on site. So, um, you know, that signifies that something's actually easy to use, right? Um, and, you know, lastly, can it do so with zero involvement from your resources? I use the word zero, maybe take that a little bit more lightly. I think any, so any, any, solution, whether you're using machine metrics or anything else, there is no silver bullet because in the end, you still need you, right? To be able to do something with that data, to be able to, to you know, um, to, to take action on that data, but um, can it do it so with as limited involvement from your resources as possible? That's, that's what I hear on the device connectivity side. And, you know, secondly, um, you know, when we're talking about scalability, you know, uh, can a connectivity solution access and manage your devices no matter where your machines are located. And you know, can you diagnose issues with those connectivity solutions and push updates to, uh, to your connectivity solution without the necessity of, of on-site visits? So I think the, the questions that, that I hear uh, that any person looking to optimize connectivity um, for, their, for their you know one site or multiple sites would be with, you know, hey, can you remotely diagnose issues uh, on your gateway devices? Right, or do you even need gateway devices to do so? Right, uh, do do your data tags update? Right, when your machine software updates, and this is something that we've heard is a huge pain point for machine connectivity. Is you know, well, well now when the, the machine's firmware updates, right, uh, the data changes. Right, so um, is that something that can be supported through a solution that you're looking for? Um, can you deploy algorithms, solutions? So maybe some of you are in the more advanced stages of your analytics journey. Um, and, and will you have the ability to not just, you know, say, hey, this is the solution I'm looking for today, but have the ability to actually uh, connect, uh, you know, a, a solution that actually solves a problem uh, on the edge without uh, requiring human, uh, human uh, intervention. Um, you know, this is where we see the future of the industry going is, you know, being able to adapt the machines themselves. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, can you manage where this data goes, right? Um, and, and, and so long story short, like those are the things that I heard, Jacob, um, you know, I really appreciated your, 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 um, the, your, your presentation here. And, and now uh, I know we've got a lot of questions coming in. Uh, I want to make sure that we have time to address them all. So, uh, allow us to kind of open things up, uh, to, to, to the audience. Uh, and I'm going to just start by kind of kicking off with the questions that have already been asked us and, uh, we'll take them kind of one by one and, Feel free to just fill the Q and A section with as many questions as you have here. Um, and, you know, I'll stop sharing my screen, and we can, you know, uh, address this this component of the presentation. So, uh, a good question that's come in here is: in case production operators don't give you access to PLCs, maybe a fear of uh, breaking a warranty or something like that, 
Uh, is it possible to connect uh, an edge router to sensors, outputs like analog or mob breath to collect data? Jacob? Ab absolutely. So there's a wide variety of different ways to connect to the equipment. In some cases, you're going to connect to an Ethernet port on the control. In others, you might need to connect to relays uh, on the actual machine itself to understand whether it's running or not. Uh, it really depends on what you're connecting to. Many of these machine controls, like you said, support things like Modbus TCP, and we can connect to a uh, secondary NC uh, that's communicating with that, that PLC to actually uh, run the machine. So we can get data from a variety of different approaches. The goal is not to uh, break any warranties. That's, that's not what we're up to. Uh, you really want to take the approach that's going to provide the longest uh, benefit to the equipment that you have, and that, that involves honoring that warranty. Uh, and a follow-up question from this, uh, from the user, uh, you know, the attendee here, uh, you know, uh, sounds like you're servicing a customer that's, you know, different locations, um, you know, to be connected to each local edge. Uh, some have controls, some don't. Um, is this something that Machine Metrics takes on every day? Yes. Yeah. So this is actually even important in the case of a single building. Uh, so in many cases, you might have a building where it's not advantageous to have one edge device that connects to all of the manufacturing equipment, though we do support that, uh, it might be more beneficial to have a network drop that has an edge device more locally connected to a, a cell of machines. So if you expand that out to multiple facilities, that's possible too. You have edge devices within each location, maybe different cells have edge devices, but they're all, all that data is being pushed into the machine metrics cloud where it's all visible from a single dashboard. Interesting, great. Um, a good question coming in here, uh, more of a, uh, a comment, but uh, I think it's a good one to share with the group was, um, you know, uh, Michael said that an interesting variance would be how long an operation is scanned active per an operator on the ERP and the percentage of time the machine is actually running parts after setup, assuming separate operations. Jacob, do you want to speak to that? We, we solve for that, that use case, yes. You, you can easily compare the information in your ERP with machine metrics or use machine data in machine metrics to drive that ERP connection, but uh, also being able to understand which operators are responsible uh, for certain equipment at any given time allows for you to create programs uh, that improve, uh, improve your workforce. Awesome. Okay, I'm getting more questions that are coming in here. Um, uh, this is a great question, I love this. So, you know, for, for most manufacturers, which parameters from the machines are like the relevant ones? <laughs> uh, Jacob already has a great answer in mind, so I'm going to let him take it from here. Yeah, so uh, start small. Start small, but there are four major ones. Four major ones. Utilization, right? Is the machine running or not? Can have so much power across uh, a lot of different continuous improvement initiatives that you want to involve. It's all about is the spindle running? So uh, execution, is the machine running or not? Um, utilization, availability is all different words for basically the same thing. Uh, parts, when was the last time the machine completed a cycle? Because now you have all the components outside of uh, production standards and um, quality, that's OEE. Like you're getting really close to having OEE with just those two data points. Uh, a third is alarms. So you really want that context rich, contextually rich information about why the machine is not doing what it's supposed to do. And the machine can often tell you a lot about uh, kind of what isn't being done around it to allow it to keep running. And a fourth, and this one's really, really important for automating a lot of your factory floor systems. And that's the name of the thing that the machine is supposed to be doing, the program or the part number. If you can get that off the control, you can drive a ton of continuous improvement initiatives around making sure your parts are produced on time, efficiently, and getting better at doing it over time without any wow. operator input. Love it, Jacob. That's a great advice for anybody who's looking for a solution right now. If the solution doesn't give you those four things, right, um, you know, it's going to be a real challenge, uh, you know, to, to drive, you know, optimal, uh, uh, optimal use cases around it. Um, so uh, any other questions coming from the audience? Um, yeah, I think we've taken on a fair amount of them. We've got maybe you know, a couple more minutes uh, here. Otherwise, we can cut things short. Um, I'll just pause. And for those of you that you know, maybe aren't comfortable asking questions here um, and would like to uh, you know, follow up with questions. Uh, oh, I think we did get another question that just popped in here. Um, is machine metric supporting edge implementation at edge devices? Um, 
could you, uh, I'm trying to decipher the question. Um, maybe a follow-up question to this, uh, maybe just a bit more uh, clarity, then we can we can try to answer that one. So uh, I, I'll, I'll try to touch on some things that I think it might be related to. So um, we are, we're hoping to move more and more capabilities to the edge over time. Um, today, most of the use cases that our edge devices serve are sending data to our cloud. That's a primary use case. Another use case is to allow other systems on site to be able to consume data from our edge. It doesn't have to go through our cloud to get to you, ultimately. Um, another use case is performing analytics right on the edge device where that latency that uh, Graham was talking about earlier is highly critical. Uh, and then a third is richer contextualization, being able to say when the feed rate is above or below 100%, I should tell the cloud that there's, a, there's an alarm. Well, sure, you should tell our cloud, but really if our edge device is connected to other factory floor systems directly, you'll wanna have that come from our edge device too. So uh, I don't know if that speaks to the question, but there's a, a lot that we want to continue, evolve, continue to evolve the edge to be uh, able to do. We got, a, we got a great question that came in from Chris here. Um... Can we, and I would love, I think we'd love to dive into this a bit deeper, but can you talk more about the advantage of number four, the value in knowing that program on the machine? That I, This is really a great question because, uh, you know, even I think in our evolution here at Machine Metrics, right, our vision for, you know, leveraging this has evolved dramatically. And, you know, a lot of this has been driven by customer feedback. So, uh, Jacob, would you, would you like to speak to this? I'll do my best. So um, many manufacturers struggle a lot with ERP implementations. It's really hard to get an entire organization wrapped around the fact that we have to track everything that we're doing and really accurately to get good standards in place, uh, to be able to track costs and be able to quote effectively. And so uh, the more of that process that we can automate, the better. Um, there are solutions out there, ours included, where for certain types of manufacturing equipment, at least, or maybe all of it, you need the operator to be able to say, I'm making part X, and I'm starting it now. And then when they're done, I'm done making part X. You use that information then to go and create reports that let you see how well you're doing towards your standards um, and, and so on. If we can get that data from the machine, we can let the people on the floor do what they really should be doing. And that's improving the whole process as a whole and making parts, making sure those machines stay running. They shouldn't be tapping on a screen. We should really avoid that as much as possible. So if we can get that richness from the machine to understand what it's intending to do, um, we, we can drive all sorts of reporting. We can drive data directly into the ERP um, and so on. Yeah, and one thing I would add to that is, you know, many times, you know, depending on, you know, how you run your programs, that program has just critical information, you know, in it that can, you know, drive, uh, you know, uh, like contextualized data from the machine, right? So uh, when we were first starting machine metrics, uh, you know, uh, you know, something that we, you know, we knew we were aiming to solve, but, you know, the technology hadn't really advanced to that point yet was, you know, we saw that there were essentially, you know, people and systems, right? And people were manually entering data into these systems. And then those systems were driving information down to the machine um, you know, to run. And it, it, it could be, should be no surprise to us that with these legacy systems and people who don't grow on trees anymore, that the machines themselves are running, you know, highly inefficiently, you know, our data suggests actually that machines run closer to, you know, 20% of the time um, in reality, right? Um, well, um, the, the paradigm here, you know, shifted, uh, you know, kind of through the vision of leadership was, well, you know, really the machines know what's happening, right? They know when they need to be maintained, right? They know if you can capture data from the program, you know, what operation is running on the machine, right? What part is being made? Sometimes the program even has a, an expected, uh, uh, you know, time, like a, literally a cycle time in the program header. And if you're able to scrape that information and associate it with say like a work order, then you have all the information required uh, to automate that data, say, into uh, your ERP or MES system uh, and reduce all necessity for manual data entry required uh, for your operators in the factory floor. And that's a, that's a concept that we call uh, automated production monitoring. Um, and it's something that we've released to customers and is now currently available through machine metrics. Um, and it's a really a game changer when it comes to just having the context required uh, to know what's going on. And I think that 
you know, to Jacob's, uh, you know, first point, I love the order that he put those in. Um, everybody in every company is sort of on an analytics journey. Many, for many companies, you know, when you first start capturing and connecting to machines, uh, just knowing that your machines are running or not, it could be a game changer, right? Um, but what about what's next, right? And, and, and I think, you know, when you, when you choose a system like this, right, you, you have to be planning for the future, not just for, the, for, for you know, today. Uh, the low-hanging fruit may be capacity utilization, but, you know, even, even more is automating workflows around the operations of the machine that allow you to do more with less people. And in order to do that, um, the information from the program, the information from the, from, from the data we capture from the machines is really the foundation uh, to infinite automations around uh, the operation of these machines. Um, and, and again, we're just showing some of these examples today, but you know, we're in the early stages of, 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 of customers even attempting what is going to be possible with, with this system. Um, I, there was a, another question that came uh, from, uh, first of all, Chris, did that answer your question? Uh, feel free to, um, to let us know in, in, in the questions channel. Um, mm -hmm. Another, uh, another uh, attendee asked it, can machine metrics device uh, be, be, uh, be used um, with, without sending information to machine metrics cloud database system? Uh, can it be collected in your own SCADA system like Ignition? Uh, so Jacob, I mean, we could both answer it, but hey, you're the CTO. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. I'll, I'll answer and you can follow up. So um, while you, you have to have a subscription to machine metrics, that doesn't mean that you can't allow for that data to drive other systems. So you can have machine metrics data capture, drive your SCADA system, pull it in there. Uh, and then you can build solutions all around uh, with the highly uh, powerful API system that we have available as well. Um, so definitely check out developers.machinemetrics.com if you wanna get in the weeds. Um, but uh, going beyond just the data capture, there's a lot more to it. Um, so I'd encourage you to look at that, but you do not have to just use our tools. That's really important. That's really important. Um, Jacob, and you know, again, uh, I think if I were to dig just a tiny bit deeper into this question here, because I, I have a feeling this is what this attendee is asking, you know, um, you know, today, you know, as we move forward, um, you know, the possibility of segregating data from machine metrics cloud is, is, is potentially possible. Um, you know, what we found is that the majority of our customers and everything that we serve, uh, sort of like, you know, almost almost all cloud-based solutions is multi-tenant. Um, you know, but um, we can talk to you directly and better understand what your needs and objectives are. Um, and, and you know, we have you know hundreds of customers that are you know ITAR compliant, uh, some of the most secure customers in the world that use machine metrics as their one true source of data uh, for their for their for their um, you know operational uh, excellence uh, programs. So um, feel free to reach out about that. Um, any other questions uh, from the group? It's been some great questions. Uh, we're kind of wrapping things up here. So, um, it, you know, if, if nothing comes in over the next like minute or so, um, I will allow Jacob to escape uh, and we can conclude this, this webinar. <laughs> we really do enjoy this. It's like the best uh, best part of the job. So um, I just want to thank everybody so much for, uh, for attending. Like I said, we're going to send out the recording of this so everybody can have a chance to share it with their teams. Uh, if you're interested in, in learning more uh, about machine metrics, uh, you're welcome to book a demo through our website. Um, you know, we also have demo videos available online just to make it really easy. Um, and, and lastly, if any of you are going to be attending IMTS, uh, we're going to be all over the show. Uh, so you can find, uh, you can find machine metrics at a, at a number of, uh, of booth locations. Um, I will, uh, double check what those booth locations are right now. So I don't, I don't misquote them. Uh, but I believe our main booth is, uh, 133108, um, that's right, in the East Building. So don't forget to add us to your show calendar. Uh, and we do also have a really exciting um, kind of like release uh, that we'll be doing at the show. Uh, specifically, we'll be launching uh, the Connected Factory Experience, which is, um, it is a group of software companies that provide integrated solutions uh, out of the box. So manufacturers can start realizing the value of a machine data-driven factory. Uh, within days, not years. Uh, you can find us in the main hall. Uh, we have a 40 by 50 booth, uh, booth 338248. I expect all of you to remember all these numbers by heart. Um, and we will have, uh, we'll be partnering there with MaintainX, uh, Fulcrum ERP, VKS, uh, Fanuc, uh, and Universal Robots. 
uh, all in one big 40 by 50 booth. So we do hope that you'll come by and check it out. You can also check out um, the, the website, which is uh, theconnectedfactory.com, uh, where you'll get to see another video of me if you're not tired of me already. Um, but thank you all again so much. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you all so much. And, and for Victor's sake and everyone else's, this whole session has been recorded. You will be getting it uh, sent to you very shortly. So thank you all for attending. Really appreciate it. Hopefully see some of you next week. Looking forward to it. Bye, everyone.